once again uh, the uh, Invitational, the Heart of the Swan, King of the Hill, where 4GG is playing play today. And, uh, well, game is just launching. Daybreak is going to be our first map. It's, of course, a best of three. We're going to find out if Bly has a couple of interesting strategies. He's always good for a trick or two in the Wings of Liberty. Now he's playing in Heart of the Swarm. And if he actually practiced a lot, I can certainly see him coming up with some interesting strategies. He started in one of the first Wings of Liberty, uh, sorry, Heart of the Swarm games that I casted from him with an early Spinecrawler rush with the new creep spread. So let's see what he has up his That's sleeve against awesome, the Tyrant player. I actually have not seen that yet. I'm really. I hope he does something like that again. But you, you know the strategy that he uses sometimes against Protos, right? Yeah, and but this time they have a change with the new creep spread, so it exactly. can be even more effective. So, you know, everybody was talking about how that change might be too strong because players might abuse it, but I haven't seen it just yet, and I, I really, really hope to. Um, I, I could not imagine a more exciting opener. Uh, you know, to me, Bly is, is extremely creative. He loves that rush. He loves his fast layers. And he's a player who's played so many games. He plays so many games yeah. that he has a ton of experience. He's starting at the bottom left here in blue, starting for Team Asa, of course. And uh, his opponent in this particular series is the Terran player starting to the top right, which is 4GG, starting for Team Millennium here. So we have a Terran versus Zerg, and we've already seen a few in the Heart of the Swarm Invitational, and very strong pushes by Terran, especially with Bio. Dragon showed that several times against various Zerg players, and was also not shy to start with the Reaper build, for example. Yeah, uh, and I'm, I'm really hoping that 4GG is going to show us some creative play with uh, that new Caduceus Reactor, for example. Um, it looks like the Medivacs in this current patch are spawning, of course, with that re speed boost right away, so... We've seen a lot of players using that to help their Reaper drops, for example, or even Widow Mine drops, as we saw actually in the Heart of the Swarm Invitational just a few days ago. Exactly. We had one of those Heart of the Swarm Invitationals organized by Blizzard right in front of, uh, before the Blizzard Cup started, before the finals started. It was really interesting to see the Koreans toy around with the new units, and it was a little bit of a overshow match series where the players kind of introduced the new units and uh, fooled around with them a little bit. It was quite fun to see the ZVZ, especially between ST and DIG. But now we have, of course, two players who uh, have a lot more experience with the Heart of the Swarm, with the new units. And we'll see how this is going to work. In uh, the Blizzard Invitational, we've seen a lot of Vipers being used in uh, by Zerg. And Viper looked as support unit actually really, really strong. Yeah, it looks extremely so strong. In fact, you know, if you don't have any significant form of anti-air, you're going to really struggle against it. I feel like people just know the Vipers out there and they don't quite know how to deal with it yet. There's going to have to be a little bit of uh, targeting in the future. I feel maybe small groups of Stalkers will target them down or maybe even Tempest might be used or in late game uh, Terran versus or you got to make sure you don't get too far behind because if he can get that many Vipers up and start putting Evolution Chambers down to kill with the uh, Corruption or not uh, Corruption Consume ability, things can get really really difficult for you because you basically have unlimited energy. Yeah. The expansion now going down for GD, uh, we have for Bly the double queen, so uh, at this point we see him without gas. And it's going to be interesting to uh, see what exactly Bly's plan is, I really want to see that. We have talked about the Viber play, but this is not, not necessarily what we are going to see here. And uh, what Game I post. found pretty interesting also, we talked a little bit to David Kim who was also at the yeah, at the Blizzard Cup about this mineral thing that we've been talking about yeah. in the last few games if you actually watched. It seems that the mineral mining is a lot more effective, that players are building a huge, huge bank in the late game. And this might actually not be intentional. When we talked to him about it, he was like, hmm, that's kind of interesting. We never really paid too much attention to it. At this point, we didn't really want to keep with the mineral changes, so we have to have a second look at it, if that's really intended right now. They're focusing on balance and on the units, of course, but there are a lot of things that Blizzard will just have look at especially the details then later on Very and true. that's definitely one of them one of the important ones i i think that uh that type of thing can can easily go unnoticed especially if it's unannounced like that and i think uh you were actually the first person who really drew my attention to it. i always felt like i had more minerals uh throughout hard the storm especially in the early game because of that you know the auto split yeah. when you go through um but then when you pointed that out i actually started to, to pay a little bit more attention and little things like going fast, three three uh, three CCs, uh, for example, like 4GG is doing, 
would really be affected by something like this because you'll have so much more mining and the efficiency becomes so much better. Yeah, it's just in the in the end of the game, it seems like players are sometimes even having a 10,000k mineral bill, a bank, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. If that sticks in the late game or, well, let's say in when Heart of the Swarm is released, the one thing that I'm afraid of a little bit is that players just realize, okay, well, I have so many minerals, I don't really have the gas to go with it. If I just dump that in cannons, in uh, bunkers, in stewards, in spine crawlers, then I'm going to be much safer. And at the same time, I still have the minerals that I need to use with my gas that I have. Yeah. So we could see like pretty stale late games when, especially a Zerg player who starts to creep forward with a creep spread, has like <laughs> like 50 or 60 spine crawlers and spore crawlers. I mean, we even see that now in Wings of Liberty. If you suddenly have the minerals to go even more crazy with it, yeah, uh, I, I see what you're saying. We've also seen the ability that players have to have fewer harvesters and make more army supply. Um, but as a Zerg player, like you said, if you make that many spine cars, you could also do a bunch of crazy stuff with oversupply, I think, if you have that many resources, if you have like the space to, to do that with your drones, for yeah. example. And Bly here apparently having a few problems. Not quite sure if his mom just called the dinner is ready or if it's a phone call, if it's, it's something with this keyboard. But we are back to <laughs> business now. And it's like his girlfriend's like, Bly, stop playing that game. He's like, no, I'm, I'll be there in a second. <laughs> <laughs> Only for GG. <laughs> I'm not playing Stefano here. Well, there's the Zergly speed, by the way. Um, and it seems to me so far in these show match series when we've had Terran versus Zerg, we've had quite a lot of that matchup. It's usually the Terran players who go straight for the new units because they have their units a little bit more available. You know, you don't have to wait till the Infestation Pit tech to get your new units out. You can go right away with the Reapers or with the Caduceus Reactor, which in the most recent patch has actually required the Fusion Core, so it's going to be a, a more of a late game upgrade. Or you're going to have to really invest that gas you want to have it out in the yeah. game. Yeah, you're right. It seems to me that for Zerg, of course, those units are hitting a little bit later, so the early game is not as effective. We see still very similar openings to Wings of Liberty. For GG in this game, is sticking also with the guns that he's using in uh, the current game. But yeah, you're completely right. We've seen so many Reaper openings where they're trying to use it, and uh, Terran just it feels like they have an early advantage of those units, whereas for Zerg, usually it kicks in on LaTeX, and uh, well, you have a couple of things that were changed in the early game, but just in general, feels like Terran has those units readily available at the first tech already. Yeah, you're right. I think I think that something to think about as well is the Hellbat, for example, and the new medevac together can be such a powerful combo because the Hellbat is considered a biological unit, so it can be healed by medevacs. And I wonder if we'll see something like that. 4GG is just reacting out Hellions, but he's doing it in the same way that you would expect in Wings of Liberty right now. But once he gets that armory up for 2 2 upgrades, he'll also be able to use the you know, Battle Hellions, or rather Hellbats, name was changed, uh, with the armory. Of, you know, it takes an armory to switch. So I'm curious if he's going to just continue making Hellions just off of one factory, but just keep making them throughout the game. We also haven't seen any Widow Mines yet. This was one of the units that has been used a lot in the Heart of the Swarm Invitational that was organized by Blizzard. Before the Blizzard Cup, we've seen uh, how it uh, actually drops with the Widow Mines. And Bly is going straight into a Spire. This is something that we don't see against Terran this often anymore in Wings of Liberty. So he tries to take advantage of the changes to the Mutalisks here. And has to be a little bit careful at the third base there. Not too many harvesters just yet. Oops, but well, transferring them over right now is a bit of an oversight. Yeah, that was unfortunate for him. He didn't pull that back in time to realize this is all of his harvesters. They're not a single Hellion killed, and that's an extremely cost efficient trade. You see, 4GG may start Blue Flame here as he has that second factor with the tech club. He could also potentially just play more normally and get siege tanks out at this point. Uh, the Mutalists that we're going to see are probably going to be pretty tame considering how many Marines 4G is going to have out, but with that new acceleration I think they could definitely be annoying. What was the idea of the Mutalist Wings of Liberty originally? Originally they were used to just dance around the Terran army, try to take out key units like siege tanks, try to go into the main base, pin the Terran player down and make sure that you are very mobile on the map, that you have this safe economy. And this is exactly what he tries to do here again. And with the new acceleration, it's something that is most likely going to be very effective against 4GG. For me, it's interesting to see how the Terran player is going to deal with it. The Mutalists are already being built. 
And will 4GG now go into Thor's? He's already on his way with the first armory, so he could go into Thor's. Will he just rely on Marines and Stimpak? Uh, on, of course, the missile turrets? Something that we're gonna find out within the next few minutes. But right now, 4GG doesn't actually know that there is a spy attack, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. He's, he's a little bit unaware. And if you consider that, he's probably not gonna start Thor's uh, until he sees a big Mutalus threat. Something else to consider with these Mutalus is they can shut down drops but not as easily as you would expect with that new speed upgrade. So, you know, they're, having Mutalus out means that when someone comes into your main base, yeah, you can kill, kill a dropship. Oh, look at that, it makes some Hellbats. But uh, you can kill a dropship on its way out, but it's hard to fight them and chase them down. Otherwise, a little bit of Mutalus harasses his first glimpse of the Mutalus. You can see with no turrets here, he was not prepared. He didn't know that this tech was here at all. Yeah, he lost the seven harvesters right away, but this drop in the main base hits at the most awful timing for Bly, and this could do a lot of damage. He could take out the Spire. It looks like he definitely will. There's no clean even to transfuse. He's got a clean, but doesn't have enough energy. I don't believe he's got one transfuse, but he gets the Spire. Yeah, that is, of course, awful. Yeah, if you have to attack with, like, five Mutalists against ten Marines, then you know that something just went horribly wrong for you. You know, the medevacs here may be able to escape all no. Not even with the speed upgrade. Yeah. Not even the Vin Diesel, the Vin Diesel upgrade. Can save <laughs> well, I think uh, <laughs> I think if you consider how much damage was done there, though, that was a lot. Of, I mean, the 200 gas loss in the medevacs is fine when you consider that this spire was killed. He also traded against the drones really well. There's enough marines here with new medevac reinforcements to stop those lanes. He killed 16 harvesters as well. And now it's time for Bly to attack because he has to kind of equalize the score. He has a decent mutilist count, so even though the Spire died, he still has 11 of them. Yeah, it looks like Bly has really been tinkering with his mutilist. His play is quite smooth. He knows how to control the mutilist with their acceleration. You can actually see it in action here. Getting those extra SUVs there at that last second and getting out without a single shot yeah. is, is something that you can only do in Heart of the Storm. And Wings of Liberty, you would have taken a little bit of damage on one of those mutas. I'm surprised that he doesn't have overloads ready to spot these medivacs. Yeah. Once again, 4GG gets into the main base, doesn't even use the boost here. Exactly, and you know, consider that, uh, consider that with this situation, that form, 4GG realized with his, mutas, or with his marines at his third base, hey, I see your mutas are in my main base. I have enough marines to send back, but I also can drop them while your drop defense is at home, but those even with no drop defense ready with the mutas, he was able to get back and shut this down. But Bly is starting to get a little bit further behind in supply. He has to keep running back to his base as all 4GG is cranking out units on three base. Yeah, he had the bank though. He was waiting for the Spire and it just finished. So now we have eight mutalists on the way. The first Thor is being built for 4GG, so he's not wasting any time here to start his defense against the mutalists. A strong army for the Terran player nonetheless, he has a 68 supply army on the map, but so does Bly. He's making 15 Mutalists though, and that's not, you know, that's really great and that's useful, but that's not really an army you want to fight against 2-2 two, two Marines, which these Marines are about to be, and there's two Thors coming in to supplement the army of 4GG as well. So, consider that he doesn't, yeah, he's just not making his first 10 bailings, and they're not going to have speed, so when this fight actually happens, if we have good marine splits and, and good targeting, I think that this is going to be a really tough fight for Bly to take straight up, but he's probably going to avoid that at all costs. Both players are playing this on a pretty low economy, if you think about it, 60 harvesters, so already a little bit of an adaptation to what we've seen in the past, where players with 80 mutalists, uh, sorry, with 80 drones or even more, are having this huge bank, they realize that they don't need this many anymore. Hive tech is now coming up, plus one attack, and now Bly focusing on the strategy, circling around the Terran army, trying to find an opening, and suddenly he finds one in the main base. He can't even fight those Marines if he wants to. Yeah, he could. He decides not to for some reason. Takes uh, a few Mutal losses, but does some damage. Hive is on the way. We've got the mainling speed now on the way as well. A critical upgrade when you have the same composition. Oh, the Thor's getting some insane shots there. Whoa. Yeah, he needs to be careful here. The Thor's not killing too much, but of course this AoE damage against the class setup Mutal is, is just so, so strong. And he is just able to get it that way. But here comes for GG with a 20 supply surplus in supply. And now Bly needs to have an opening. The siege tanks are sieging up. The Banelings not even with the speed upgrade. Yeah, they don't have the speed upgrade just yet. Raven drops everywhere. He's attacking on the left side of the map while he's running into the fourth base in the middle of the map. Just being very good with his multitasking here. For yeah. GG, everything you would expect from a Korean player. Very positional as well. And right now, these few Marines are giving Bly a hell of a time in the top right of the main base, so 
And not a lot of openings for Bly, he fell, uh, yeah, he fell back early in the game when the Spire was killed. His Mutalists are now trying to take down the economy, yeah, they're but it might be too late. They're doing a ton of damage, but yeah, they, they can't save him here, and 4GG is not interested in turning around. That's something I think he was a little bit hoping for with these videos, hoping that 4GG would turn off and get off of his back. But see, even with the, the new speed and the regeneration, you're not going to want to fight Marines straight up always going to lose his bailing nest. This is so critical, and 4GG could actually get out with these Marines. I don't know if he's paying attention. He's not focusing here, and the bailing nest is still alive. The SCVs are nearly gone. There are only 31 left, but the army supply for 4GG is just amazing. Yeah, he has to win this fight to, and win this game, but it starts to look like there's no way that Y is going to be able to take this game. He's going to have to do really well with this fight. The units are well split, though. The bailings have decent hits, but the reinforcing Marines, I feel like, yeah. is going to be too much with all these siege tanks. Look at the bank for Bly. He just can't get rid of it. He doesn't have the lava anymore. He's on 2,000 and runs on 1,000 gas that he can't use. And this is, of course, a big problem for him. If he could use it, I think he could overwhelm this army. And uh, Mojichi just doesn't have the sustainability at this point. Yeah, Bly losing it to all of his overlords here. Actually, find himself supply block now. He's got Ultralis Captain and a Greater Spire. He just will never be able to use. They're never going to see the light of day. In fact, the Greater Spire is going to have to be canceled. Meanwhile, Mutalists are finally cleaned up at the third base. And I think that's that's all she wrote for game number one. Yeah, that puts Lay on the coffin. For Bly, no chance to win this anymore. And just contemplating what he could have done differently at this point. GG.